Doris, I'm not really familiar with the Adult Guardianship and Trusteeship Act. Can you explain that to us and tell us who is that for? So the Guardianship and Trusteeship Act is for someone who hasn't done their personal directive and their enduring power of attorney. So those are two entirely separate systems. If you've done those two documents, you'll never have to use the Adult um, Guardianship and Trusteeship Act. When you haven't done those documents and you have an issue with capacity, now you still need someone to help you with your finances mm -hmm. and you still need someone to help you with health care. So now there's a public system that says, here's how you apply for a guardian. The guardian is the person who would take care of health care. Mm -hmm. Here's a system that allows you to apply to have someone appointed as your trustee and the trustee is going to be the person who deals with all of your financial matters. Mm -hmm. So it's completely a sort of public versus private system. So the private private system is your enduring power of attorney and personal directive. The, if you don't have those, now you have to go into the court system and have a guardian and trustee appointed. When is this act useful? So it's useful where people don't have those documents and so then they have to make that court application because once you have dementia and you cannot make your decisions anymore, now families are going to run into those brick walls. So mm -hmm. now you can't write a check anymore because of your dementia. How are your bills going to get paid? Mm -hmm. Well, your daughter can't just go to the bank and take out money for you. So now she's going to have to apply for a trusteeship in order to help you with your finances. Mm -hmm. When you go to the doctor, the doctor really should only take instructions from the patient or someone leaving legally appointed. So without a personal directive, now that daughter's going to have to get a guardianship appointment so that she can talk to the doctor and the doctor can legally give her medical information and take um, instructions from her. Lots of people run into the guardianship problem when they need to place the person who has dementia into a care facility mm. because the care facility can't just take instructions from anyone. They have to take mm. instructions from someone legally appointed. So often we'll run into that guardianship problem at that end as well. And you can, can you tell me about the process? So the process is unfortunately very cumbersome. So you have to make a court application. The application itself is very long and repetitious and um, you take that application, you submit it to the public guardian's office. Usually you would have a lawyer help you through the process. Mm -hmm. um, so once the public guardian's office gets the application, they then go and visit the person who has dementia and say to them, these people want to take over your finances and want to get in charge of your health care. How do you feel about that? And for some people that's okay, but lots of people who have dementia have um, angry periods or they are in complete mm. denial of their disease. So then yeah. when they have someone from the government come to them and say, hey, you have dementia and these people want to take over your affairs, that creates all kinds oh, of family yeah. disharmony and it makes the person feel bad. The um, In the process, the person has to be tested. There has to be a formal um, medical report saying they have dementia and they need someone to manage their affairs. So again, now you're making the person you're um, the caregiver for uh, go and get tested. So they have to be tested. If someone does have to go through the Adult Guardianship and Trusteeship Act, what advice do you have for them? Well, um, so they probably should hire a lawyer just because the process is so cumbersome. Mm -hmm. um, and once they get to the lawyer's office, there will be a questionnaire that undoubtedly a lawyer will have to give to them because there's just so much information mm -hmm. that has to be gathered. So once they're in that process, there's just a lot of work to do. So they have to um, get medical reports done. They have to fill out this long questionnaire with all kinds of addresses of family members and who everyone is and then it goes back to the lawyer to complete the application which then goes to the public guardian's office and they then process it. So unfortunately um, it can often take three months, six months, nine months to get through the whole process. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you again, if you compare it to the power of attorney and personal directive, once those are done, it's instantaneous. They're already there. They're ready to go as opposed to this cumbersome, um, long monthly process that has to be done for on the adult guardianship and trusteeship side. Okay. Thank you, Doris. You're very welcome.